Hey everybody, welcome back. We're out here working on the M&W, uh, our baler, it's a 1500. It's one of those things I like to do every year, just to try to go through it, check it out. I like to get up inside of here. It's probably kind of hard to see um, the camera, but it's, it's, the, it's the mechanism that releases the elevator chain when you open it up so the elevator chain quits working but the the roller on the bottom and the pickup still runs so you can kick the bail out also it's the gearbox and the clutches inside there i like to grease them I like to go through them just check them out i like check gear oil make sure none of that's leaking and plus it gets full of chaff i mean just packed full of chaff so i like to get in there and clean all that stuff out i've been using this poly twine but I've got a couple of customers that have requested to use Sissel. So that's going to be a process of getting this thing set up. When, when I first bought this baler, I ran Sissel for a couple years. And then I switched to Poly. It was just so much cheaper. And we stored our hay outside, so it kept better. Uh, but now I'm storing our hay inside, and we're going to go back to Sissel. It's a little more expensive, but I, I like it better. It seems like when it gets wrapped around the manure spreader, and it inevitably does every year. It tends to rot and things kind of go away. You can see we pulled the chain off this side here. It goes all the way around. Ties into the gearbox here, comes back. A couple of idlers back here, runs around this. Which drives this one of these rollers through the through the bottom here. Underneath that flips the bail. And there's chains on the other side. That fit this sprocket here comes off this main shaft here which is where that main gear is on the other side and it drives the pickup from this side which is right here there's another chain back up inside of here and it drives the secondary roller that's back here so everything drives off that main chain on the other side but I'm gonna run through here and check bearings and you know just kind of run through and just do the, the spring maintenance on this stuff you know, I knew all these chains were loose. I knew they were stretched last last fall, and last round of bailing. But I just wanted to make it through. So we've got uh, we got some bearing work to do, but we'll get them ordered and get them in here. And here again is this is this uh, sprocket, and you can see that the bearing's actually spinning inside the sprocket. Things escalated pretty quickly here. I went ahead and I pulled the pickup out of this thing found some play in the pickup it comes out pretty easily it's just these brackets that hold it on to this big it's like a I don't know what it is it's just a big piece of steel back there and then these brackets these brackets actually hold it on two big bolts and there's one that's a floater bolt it hooks to these springs here uh, and then it just slides right out but you can see up underneath here you can see the rollers and I, I figured, you know what, I got some time. I'm just gonna go through this thing. Uh, you know, parts availability for these balers are kind of tough. Messix, um, there's a company out there called Messix and they do a pretty good job of uh, stocking parts. Um, you know, again, these are, these are crone balers. Uh, if it's bearings and stuff like that, you know, you can order bearings from just about anywhere. Uh, but if it's specific shims or isolators or anything you know that could be tough but i'm gonna go ahead and uh dive into this pickup a little bit and see what i got as you can see here we've got we've got this assembly and that's the cam assembly that it runs in you pump that dude full of grease that way these cams have something to roll in uh i popped the bearing when I pulled it apart, as you can see over there. So I am gonna order new bearings there, but you can see this, this is loose right here. This is loose. This is snug. This is ex extremely loose down here. You know, you can see this movement here. Daddy, this and then right here. We've got movement here. You putting them in there, buddy? Like this. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Good job. Well, we've got the pickup completely tore apart. Um, 
I'm going to check on these bushings and see what kind of availability we have for this stuff. And it, uh, we'll see what we can get. And we'll get the parts we can get, and we will go from there. It's got the main bracket pulled off. Here's the uh, four bar pickup with the cams on the sides here. Um, we're going to order new insert bearings for here, and we're going to check out all these pieces because there's a lot of play in there. I had to order some parts and order some bearings, and I've got my right hand man out here with me. We uh, went and did a little bit of disking this morning, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah? It's Easter Sunday, so we had to get out of the house to do something. Uh, Don't you my bicycle? Yeah, you show them your bicycle? Yeah, that's been a new development in the past three days. We've, we've gotten the bike and the training wheels out, and he's going to town. Uh, but anyway, like and subscribe. I love having some new subscribers. I hope you all enjoy the content. Uh, we had to order some bearings and some other parts for this bad boy. Um, one of the one of the items was this idler sprocket and the bearings were actually spinning inside of here well i ordered new bearings and I, I figured that these things were wallowed out a little bit but i wanted to go ahead and order some new bearings to see how tight they fit well I, I stuck it in there and it slid out just like the other one what i've done is i learned an old trick from a guy one time uh, you actually go in inside on the the area where the race sits or the outside of the bearing and you peen it or you, you hit it with a punch and you knurl it a little bit and that gives it something to grip on. We'll do that and throw some Loctite in there and we'll be in business. Vance wants to show you his bike. Wow, that's a cool Paw Patrol bike, buddy. Got Paw Patrol in here. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Got his own workbench. I'll, I'll show it to you. My grandpa made it. You've seen my grandpa in some of our videos. Oh, you got another bike? Well, we got picnic tables and rugs, but my grandpa made him his own workbench and a stool because he's kind of short. So we found it a home back here. Uh, well, we're going to get back to this M&W. Uh, we're going to put some bearings in and see how it goes. Bearings in, as you can see, no spinny spinny on the on the uh, exterior of the bearing here. It's good and solid. The inside's running good. Uh, there's flush. Got all the spacers in. And these teeth, I mean, they're, they're war. They're war really bad. But I was just going to try to get another year out of them. year but the one of the last cuttings of hay I had I was about a third of the way through baling for the day and I actually had a wheel fall off uh, it was my fault it was lack of maintenance uh, it was something that you know it was all on me long story short I was able to run and get some bearings for it and finish up baling the rest of the day it happened early it happened about noon 10 well about 11 o'clock or so but in doing so uh, I was able to reuse the inner bearings. It uh, chewed them up a little bit. It chewed up the the spindle and the you know where the spindle nut because it sat there and rode on it for quite a while. Didn't realize it. I got enough threads on there to get it to bite, you know. Uh, but we've got a set six or Timken set six and a Timken set forty five for this guy. And we got a new SKF seal, which is a. Uh, one uh one nine 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 two we're gonna go ahead and put those in today i took the old race it's still a little warm but i ground down the outside so hopefully it doesn't get stuck inside of this bad boy but we're going to use that to press it in because this is the biggest socket that i have i got the hub put back on got the bearings in 
I had to make a new washer to space out for the nut a little bit because uh, the threads were boogered up on the inside. Something else we have to adjust here. This is the chain ch tension for the elevator chain. You know, it's still, it says five and seven eighths to six and a half. We, uh, we need to adjust this a little bit. Uh, we've got a little bit more slack than that. We got about six and a half. So we're gonna run it down a little bit just to snug everything up, probably make everything run a little smoother. Started disassembly of a pickup. Uh, this has plastic bushings in here and this plate just comes off and then there's these wear, wear bushings in here. All they are, I mean, I started sliding them off and they're just a, a split type bushing. Uh, so I'll order new plastics for these and new, uh, new metal bushings. And then this guy actually has a steel bushing inside of it that's a wear item. But there's eight of these, so these are all the same. There's a metal bushing on this side and a plastic on that side. Uh, I ordered new roll pins for this as well. They're, these are a little loose, so I'm gonna put the roll pins in. I mean, you can see it's a little, you know, they're a little loose. I mean, I'm probably just gonna roll with it, put the new roll pins in, see how tight it is. I mean, I could always tack, put a couple of tacks on here, but I, I think for the time being, I'm just gonna put the new roll pins in and, and let her ride and see how tight it is. But I just kind of wanted to keep you all updated on what's going on with the baler. We're, uh, we'll continue to plug away and add some more videos when we can. Uh, like and subscribe. You know, I, I, I enjoy when people give me some feedback as well. So I appreciate you all tuning in and uh, we'll see you soon.